Next up, we got Big Ten College Football Stadiums. Now, I'm trying to get more into college football. College football season is coming right up. I think it's actually in like the, a couple weeks. Not a couple weeks, but a couple days. All right, so I'm trying to get into college football right now. Uh, so you'll let me know in the comment section what videos I should react to. I'm literally doing every college football video. I see that y'all like the stadium videos, so I'm going to do more. All right, now I do want to do some also uh, some more marching band videos. I already did one before. If y'all can let me know any more college marching band videos, let me know. I love those as well. But I'm from Michigan, you know what I'm saying, even though it's a, a, a big rival between Michigan and Michigan State. Both our teams is good. Are right, both two great colleges. Um, so I'm just giving you a little heads up. So I don't know no others. I, I don't know who we really I'm trying to think. I think we I think we beef with a couple teams. I I'm not really too too in tune. I really don't watch college football like that. Um I know we got a rivalry, Michigan versus Michigan State. I know that's a rivalry, but I'm not counting that. You know, so I'm talking about other states. So y'all let me know in the comment section. Um just give me a whole rundown and everything. But Hey, I can't wait for college football season. I can't wait for football season in general to start. NFL season about to start. We got college football. I've been doing all the videos, all right? Every game, we're reacting to them. I got y'all. But, hey, let's see what it be time. Bye. Up until now, I had been going through the FBS conferences in a completely random order. But due to overwhelming... Also, so y'all let me know what... Um, stadium y'all like the most demand i've had to make the executive decision that allows the big 10 to jump the queue actually i don't think you say queue in america so to cut the line i guess combined the big 10 stadiums have a capacity of around 1 million but that doesn't mean that the average capacity is 100,000. no because there are of course 14 teams as you'd expect with a name like big 10. anyway here are the big 10 College football stadium. <laughs> Beaver Stadium, home of the Penn State Nittany Lions. The stadium is named after James, a beaver who built the stadium. Most beavers build dams, but in this area of Pennsylvania, they're a little more sophisticated. That might not actually be true. The thing I love most about this stadium is that the expansions that have occurred over the years are very conspicuous. You can basically see how every section has been expanded, and you've got a bit of everything sprinkled in. I particularly like the design of each end zone. In the north, you have this big curved upper deck that hovers above the lower bowl, which is a fairly uncommon design. And the south end zone seating is similar to that of LSU's Tiger Stadium. Looks great. The stadium is set for a major renovation that will bring it into the 21st century. Mm. Because although it looks good on the outside, there are some aspects where it's lacking on the inside. Mm. Wisconsin? Camp Randall Stadium, home of the Wisconsin Badgers. It's the oldest stadium in the Big Ten. In fact, it's named after the Union Army training camp that occupied the site during the Civil War. I'm not usually a big fan of wars, but at least they kept it civil. This one is another stadium that has a lot going on. Well, most of the capacity comes from the main seating bowl once again, which is fairly plain and simple. But then you have this sizable upper deck on the western side that curves its way around, mm -hmm. matched with the skybox equivalent on the east. The exterior is also completely different on each side of the stadium. And it's not something I usually mention, but they have a very fancy looking field house as well. Yeah, I like the field house. Maryland? Maryland Stadium, home of the Maryland Terrapins. If, like me, you were wondering what a terrapin is, it's a turtle. They chose that <laughs> name, of course, because turtles are known for their speed, strength, and agility. Okay. Nah, but turtles are cool. This one is a lot simpler than the last two. It's a fairly typical horseshoe design, with the addition of very tall triple-decker seating on one of them. Bro, imagine sitting all the way at the top, bro. I'd be literally scared, bro. And I'd be scared if I was sitting under the under the uh, stadium. Besides, and on the other side, they've got this combination of outdoor seating and luxury suites. It looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that's straight. I often note how some stadiums have an exterior that's reminiscent of a parking garage. But this one literally has a parking garage as the exterior behind the west end zone. 
Oh, for real? Which is we... very convenient. Wait. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Kinnick Stadium, Kinnick. home of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oh, Iowa. It's named after Niall Kinnick. I believe it's the only college stadium named after a Heisman Trophy winner, which is very surprising. And yet they've got one that's named after a beaver called James. This sort of design is somewhat uncommon in college football, given that it's made up of four individual stands that aren't connected. Yeah, I don't like how it's not connected. do have quite a traditional look to them, with a red brick facade for the most part. But what the stadium is most well known for can't be seen from the outside. The visitor's locker room is completely pink, which is done to put the away team in a passive mood. <laughs> I mean, how fired up can you get when you're surrounded by pink? <laughs> it also has been known to increase their concern for having their nails broken. It even extends oh. to the bathroom, which might not be in the spirit of sportsmanship, but it is kind of funny. I wonder what. Yeah, I was thinking about that. They could do that. They got. They just change it. Like, could, cause why is do, does other teams do that, or is it just them? Cause I would think if they if they allow that, every team would just have some just in the away locker room so they can have a better chance of winning. Crossing the line, could you constantly have K-pop music playing in the rooms? That's like the audio equivalent of the color pink. Well, to be honest, I don't even know what it sounds like, but just look at them. I don't know what it sounds like, but look at them, chill. Memorial Stadium, home of the Illinois Fighting Illinois. Illinois. This one's a little different. It has a very elegant neoclassical design, particularly the exterior. It looks like something you'd see in the Ivy League. In fact, it kind of looks like a combination of Harvard Stadium and Franklin Field. Harvard Stadium, really nice. Something that's quite fascinating about this stadium is that during construction, way back in the 20s, Heavy rain caused one of the bulldozers to sink into the field. Dang. They decided that it wasn't feasible to remove it, so it remains there to this day. Yes, it's tragic, but at least the bulldozer driver was able to memorize the owner's manual in English, French and Spanish before he died from asphyxiation. He's a quick learner, although he did have a bit of trouble with the Japanese section. I am of course joking, nobody was buried alive with the bulldozer. But I do really like this stadium. <laughs> Memorial Stadium, Indiana? home of the Indiana Hoosiers. First impressions are that this stadium isn't anything out of the ordinary. And then you look behind each of the end zones. To the Bro, you have to walk all the way. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is the home home side and this is the away side, obviously. So I even forgot I even had that. I just had to think about it just now. Because I'm like, why is one side, like, why is it lopsided? But I'm like, one side is probably for home. It has to be. They have a mini football field out here. What the hell is this? They got a mini field. That's sweet. Um, But you have to walk. Like, literally, you have to walk from right here and walk all the way. <laughs> all the way. Like, imagine you got the like, top seat right here. It's probably, when I seen it, when I actually seen a, a view from the stands, it don't look bad from the top. You actually do want a top seat. You know what I'm saying? But just that walk down, that walk up, that's a, that's a workout. I'm not going to lie. That's a workout for sure. There's a miniature version of the field. And to the north, you Sweet. notice a spectacular cathedral or castle-like building. Stunning. Yes, sir. Although, as with many college stadiums, the southern end zone was recently expanded. So now it looks like this. Sadly, the little baby field was crushed. Dang. Yes, it's tragic, but it was able to memorize what concrete smells like before it died from asphyxiation. The interesting thing about no. this stadium is that those huge stands to the east and particularly to the west, they've been here since the stadium was built. Nice. Except there was literally nothing else. It was each end zone. Yo, that's crazy as hell with I kind of like crazy. that. <laughs> I like that too. Nebraska? Memorial Stadium. Home of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They say I'm not for bad. For being just humble Cornhusker folk, they've done like quite well for themselves. They've built themselves a magnificent stadium with grand facades on each side. Very impressive. On the inside, it looks just as good. And the Eastern Stand technically has five tiers of seating, which you certainly don't see every day. And behind each end zone, you have these huge stands, which look pretty cool. And I suppose I should mention that on game day, 
The stadium itself becomes the third biggest city in the great state of Nebraska. Although it's, it's not a city, it's a stadium within a city. Nebraska doesn't have many sizable cities, I think is the main point. Because as the legendary Nebraskan poet Douglas McNugget once said, you can't grow corn in a concrete jungle. <laughs> so true. Michigan Stadium. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, Green. our job let Arzabe. me start out by mentioning that it's the third biggest stadium in the world okay. and the biggest outside of Asia. Hey, so hey, that's hey. fairly I impressive. Like the, I like the round look. It's like equally round on each side. Like a bowl almost. You know what I'm saying? Nice. I, mean, I want to see MSU. I think MSU got a nice stadium too. In itself. But the stadium's sunken design means that, from the outside, you'd hardly notice that the stadium was anywhere near that size. Yeah. The design, although it looks pretty good, is very, very simple. It's yeah. just a single tiered bowl with skyboxes on either side of the field. In fact, the most unusual thing about it is that it's almost perfectly symmetrical. That's what I'm an saying. An anomaly in college football. The stadium holds numerous attendance records, as you might expect, wow. including the largest college football crowd that wasn't held in a NASCAR track. Dang. Which was a little over 115,000. Dang. I wonder what game that was. Ohio State? Okay. Ohio Stadium. I think we got Home beef with Ohio York. State. I think we got beef with y'all. I don't know. Ohio State Buckeyes. You see, I know that a sunken field design is more cost effective, and I guess it would be safer if an earthquake were to occur. But you've just got to love an imposing exterior like that. Just look at it. It's a fortress. I'm surprised there isn't a drawbridge. That would be pretty cool. Actually, this little section was inspired by the Pantheon in Rome. But the entire stadium itself was clearly inspired by something less opulent. That being the shoe of a horse. Mm. In fact, before the southern end was okay. filled in, it was the king of all horseshoes. Now, it technically isn't a horseshoe stadium, even if it is its nickname. But one thing that isn't in doubt is that it's a very impressive stadium. Yeah, it's nice. I really do like it. Purdue? Ross Aid Stadium, home of the Purdue Boilermakers. That is a very specific nickname, but What's I like it. What's feel? You've got to be tough to make a boiler. Well, perhaps not these days. The stadium, as you can see, is that rudimentary single tier horse. See, I think I think I think I like I think I like this like when it's all the way around, I feel like that's when it's a real stadium. Like everywhere you look, it's a person. Anywhere you look, not oh I gotta only look behind me. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause low key though, if you think about it, a team a team driving this way to this touchdown, they have nothing distracting them. It's literally perfect, perfect sky blue. But a team driving this way, you got people in the stands. You know what I'm saying? You can see all the signs and stuff. You might get scared. You might see a cute girl in the stands. Now you fumbling the ball. You know what I mean? It's more distractions. So it's like, if they had it all the way around, it'd be like, you know, perfect. Choose style that you see here and there. It's probably the simplest stadium in this conference, but for some people, that's ideal. But the stadium south end zone is a little unusual. This section used to have bleachers, but I guess it's just this guy's private parking space. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ryan Field, home of the Northwestern North Wildcats. Hmm. Now, this one's got a bit more going on. It's another the one with a fortress-like grand entrance, with two big white towers that can be seen from inside the stadium. It's the smallest Big Ten stadium in terms of seating capacity, hmm. and some of that seating is a little strange. The main stand's upper deck curves both from the bird's eye view and the side on view, which is quite uncommon. And what's with this section? <laughs> it seems like they, they got the worst seat. No, that is the guy. Like, imagine you was this person right here. Like, bro, you gotta literally sit this way. And now, now you're bumping the person next to you, knees, y'all knees touching. It's just all awkward, bro. It should and, and it's like way too spaced out. Like, why is there so much space? Like, make it, you know, contract, you know? Just continue. I don't know, what's with up with the these designers, yo? Hmm. Don't know. Like, look how much space this is. Why do y'all have all this excess space? What is that even for? Y'all not doing nothing with it. 
Like all, like all this green grass, that should that should all be stands. That should where stands to start. All right here. That's where it's to start at. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, there's a reason. It's definitely a unique stadium. You've got to give it that. Definitely unique for sure. Rutgers? Yeah, stadium. Home of the <laughs> Rutgers Scarlet Knights. There's no obvious medieval inspired architecture with this one. It's all fairly normal on the outside. But it does have a cannon, however. So that's good. It's fired when they the Scarlet Knights through? score, but I presume it also comes in handy when a drunken spectator runs onto the field. <laughs> that actually sounds like fun. <laughs> Something else that's a little unique is the red tin roof section that wraps its way around the north end zone seating. As well as this little section of the south end zone that's actually the recruiting lounge. Wow. Other than that, it's a fairly straightforward design, but a good one. MSU Spartan huh? Stadium, home of the huh? Michigan State Spartans. This stadium has a very clean design. It would even be perfectly symmetrical, just like the other stadium in Michigan, if it wasn't for this built-up site over on the west that was added in 2005. I like it. It's modern, yet traditional. And it's the only side of the stadium with a particularly good-looking exterior. The rest is a bit... meh. It may okay, come as okay. a bit of a shock, but due to this section, the stadium is actually the tallest building in the city. Wow. Provided you exclude those smokestacks over there. And to be fair, the city has a smaller population than the stadium's capacity. So, it's nice. not much of a brag. Mer and finally, TCF Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Gophers. It's the newest stadium in the conference, although you might not be able to tell just by looking at it. They have tried to stick with the traditional college football aesthetic. Kind of. Now I like I mean, this stadium. They, I actually like this stadium a lot, though. I like this. Like It has the, the right vibe to it, you know what I'm saying? Even if it is, like, people can be under it, it still looks straight. And then they have the, the built-up part on this side. It's not bad. There weren't stadium. really any designs quite like this in the 1920s. But the exterior is still fairly classical looking with the extensive use of brick and whatnot. You also get a decent view of the Minneapolis skyline from some vantage points, which is always good. The stadium is designed to be able to seamlessly expand in the future if need be, and you can just tell by looking at it where the additional seating might be added. It's a great stadium to end with. And that's all for today's video. If you hey, it, if y'all want more videos like this, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I love y'all. We out.